Hello everyone, my name is Sheridan Rathbun, and I'm the original creator and programmer of Barony. In this Kickstarter video, I want to talk a little bit about what it's like to port a game like Barony to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, when we originally wrote Barony back in 2015 to 2017, we wrote it in C using a custom-built game engine, which meant that we really couldn't just hit export to Nintendo Switch to get the port running. So what does it look like to get a port running based on an original engine? Game code for a game using a custom engine can generally be divided into three parts. You have the game code, and this defines the gameplay, the game rules, everything that you generally think of when you think of code that defines your game experience. In the middle, you've then got the game engine. This is the code that talks to your device drivers and external components to actually get things from the game world onto your screen, coming out of your sound devices, and even collecting input from your keyboard network devices. Finally, you have the external components and the device drivers. Uh, these are the actual chunks of code that maybe you didn't even write, which talk to your hardware. In the case of Barony, we rely on three main external components to get things onto your screen. To some extent, they can be used on the Nintendo Switch, but the way that the game engine interacts with them changed quite dramatically when we moved from the PC to the Nintendo Switch. When a game engine uses external components like SDL and OpenGL and FMOD, you have to keep in mind that those external components were written to accomplish tasks in very specific ways for very specific platforms. The interface that your game engine uses is similarly different depending on the platform that you're on. For example, it wouldn't make any sense to write code that uses a keyboard for a game console that doesn't even support keyboards. Other examples are a lot less obvious. The way that OpenGL works is often very different on different platforms. There are a lot of different versions of OpenGL, like OpenGL ES, which is a stripped down version which targets mainly mobile platforms like phones and tablets. And this is the version that I honestly expected to only be present on the Nintendo Switch. There are some examples that even I didn't see coming, like the fact that the Nintendo Switch file system, or at least the way you interact with it, is very, very different than what you see on most devices. So in many cases, an external library that would have those components will probably leave that functionality out or seriously change it. Let me give some concrete examples. On the Nintendo Switch, we use the same core libraries to get things done as we do on the PC. One of the big ones is SDL2. Most of that core functionality in SDL2 still work. However, certain things like rendering the true type fonts, as well as just loading images and sounds from the disk, no longer work. So we had to come up with alternate ways to get those things done. In the case of image files, I looked up how the PNG format works and figured out how to write my own code that would load images directly using just the game engine. In the case of true type fonts, that's a rather complicated task, so I found a suitable replacement library on the internet that could accomplish that task for us. In the case of OpenGL, we got really lucky, because the Nintendo Switch, in fact, supports all of OpenGL's functionality, including most of the legacy functions, but which are really important and necessary for Barony to even work. When it came to getting FMOD working, I delegated that task to Cyprian, who covered that whole process in his separate Kickstarter blog post. Most of the code that we had to write to get Barony running on the Switch came as no surprise to us, but there were a couple notable exceptions. And one of the biggest ones was that we had to change all of the code that wrote and read files from the file system. Most C programs use a distinct set of functions from what's called the standard C library to read and write files to the file system. And Barony was originally no exception, but Nintendo Switch had a very distinct and separate set of functions to get that task done. Nintendo is very careful about whether they want a developer to read and write files to any spot on the file system, which makes sense if you think about it. Generally, in a video game, you only want to write data if you're saving your game progress, and that goes to a very specific region of the disk. And you're only reading data if you need to get game assets off of the disk, so you really don't want to be able to read and write anywhere you can on the disk. So Nintendo has specifically disabled this standard set of C functions and provided this completely different one. So the game engine that I wrote had to in implement these functions in place of all of the C functions that it was using. 
which ultimately required me to go through and change every line of code that reads or writes files anywhere in the engine. But we got it done, and this was a big step in getting here and running on the switch. After fixing up the missing functionality from SDL2, fixing all the file system code, and of course fixing the sound code, we were able to finally get Barony running on the Nintendo Switch. But our work does not end there. Even though Barony is already running on the Nintendo Switch, the gameplay experience is not that good, and there's still a lot of big tasks that we need to get done to get the experience that we want. Namely, a big user interface design change, which Matthew and Josiah are already working on, as well as a big split-screen multiplayer update, which I myself am already working on. I'd like to extend a big thank you for supporting and continuing to follow this Kickstarter. It means the world to us. We've been working on Barony for over seven years, and we've loved every minute of it. So if you would continue to please tell your friends about this, and uh, stay tuned for my next update where I talk about split-screen, I would be absolutely overjoyed, and I couldn't thank you enough. Thank you. See you next time.